Cut just about any organism's food supply by 30 to 40 percent, and it will live up to 50 to 60 percent longer. If aging is complicated, multifactorial, so on and so forth, how could a simple dietary change make an organism live longer? To find out, Garente started simply with a simple organism, baker's yeast, the stuff of beer and bread. In their brief lifespan, about two weeks, yeast cells typically divide a total of 20 times. Every once in a while, though, a yeast lives longer than that, dividing, say, 25 or 30 times. Those are what Garantia looked for, the yeast equivalent of our centenarians. Well, it took them about eight years, but Garanti's group finally found that these long-lived yeast also have life-extending mutations in their DNA in a specific family of genes called sirtuins. Yep, genes have names too. Delete the most powerful of these genes, called sir 2 from a yeast cell, and it will die earlier. Add extra copies back in, and it will live up to 50% longer. Okay, we know this gene is important for countering aging, but what does the gene do? Ah, well, sirtuins, as the scientists soon discovered, are part of an intricate stress response. When times are tough, they kick an organism into survival mode to beef up DNA repair or stop cells from dying. And it turns out nothing sets these sirtuins into action, like a shortage of food. And that's why our finding with sir 2 I thought, was an epiphany, because it gave a possible explanation for how a reduction in calories in the diet could be uh, uh, equated with a long life. And I don't think it's a high People have sir 2 in genes, too, although we don't know how important they are yet. But the more these scientists experiment in yeast, and then in worms and flies, the more they realize how vital this calorie sirtuin connection is. So all of David Sinclair, once a postdoc in Garanti's lab, now runs his own at Harvard Medical School. What my lab and others have found is that when you get rid of the sir 2 gene, the diet doesn't work anymore. So put them on a calorie restrictive diet, they live longer. Take away this gene, put them on the same diet, they don't live longer. Exactly. That's amazing. Yeah. Amazing as that sounds, sirtuins aren't the only genes that do this. Yes, but also just... For more than a decade, Cynthia Kenyon of the University of California, San Francisco, has been making these microscopic worms called C. elegans live far longer than believed wormly possible. You just change one gene and the whole animal is fine. It's incredible. By damaging a single gene, this one's called DAF2, these worms live twice as long. DAF2 helps make insulin work. When it's mutated, you get less insulin. And that brings us back to calorie restriction, because it has the same effect. You limit food intake, that leads to a decrease in the level of insulin, so that should lead to lifespan extension. It turns out low insulin levels kick on survival genes too, just like the sirtuins. So by damaging DAF2, the wormly life is longer. Yeah, you can see why they call it elegans. They're very beautiful. Right, right. These squiggly, squirmy guys are about four days old. But in two weeks? They look terrible. They're in the nursing home. Right. They look like they're falling apart. Their heads are moving, barely, but that's it. And now, prepare yourself for something amazing. This is the mutant worm. We changed just one gene, the DAF2 gene, at that same age. And you can see, it's moving around. It looks great. It's equivalent to looking at someone that's 90 and thinking that they're 45. And the best part? When the equivalent genes were tweaked in flies and then in mice, their healthful properties were also preserved. These long-lived animals are resistant to a whole range of age-related diseases. The worms have muscle deterioration that happens later. The fruit flies are more resistant to heart failure. The mice are more resistant to cancer. This is a whole new way of thinking about disease, a whole new way. Maybe. But hold on a minute. If all this research is so tied to cutting calories, <laughs> how do we explain these guys? I always had breakfast. I always had lunch. We I eat, eat whatever I like, and I do what I like. It could be that they have different variants of these longevity genes, allowing them to experience the effects of calorie restriction without really having to do the diet. So what about the rest of us, then, who may not be so blessed? Can we live longer by eating less? Well, it's not proven in people yet. But the answer to many scientists is probably. If we eat a lot less, 30 to 40% less to be exact, 
which means the food someone like me might take in in a day, would shrink from about 2,500 calories to 1,500 calories. Hey, it's no fun, but people do it. I did try calorie restriction for about a week uh, and gave up. It's, a, it's not a pleasant way to exist. Perhaps it was pangs of hunger that led David Sinclair towards his next venture, finding drugs that offer the benefit of calorie restriction without the drastic diet. He's off to a good start. Sinclair found that resveratrol, the molecule that has been touted to make red wine healthful, stimulates the sirtuin genes and allows everything from yeast to worms to flies to live 30 to 40 percent longer. And it's looking good for mice. Those are the G's. You have to do the B's now, right? Okay. Barzilai, Garenti, and Kenyon oh, are also right seeing there. their gene targets make their way into the pharmaceutical arena. I'm hoping that within my lifetime we'll see the benefits of this research. Being very optimistic, we could see these uh, in the next five to ten years. That'd be wonderful. In the meantime, none of the scientists are exactly waiting around for this to happen. I eat a diet that is predicted to keep my insulin levels lower. I don't calorie restrict, but I don't gorge myself. I drink more red wine than I used to. My HDL is good because I'm taking two different drugs to increase that. Would you recommend living this long to everyone? Why not? Yes. Of course. Yeah, life's wonderful. But I have had the tent. I want to see you here again. It's a date. You shake hands with me? I'll shake hands with you. Okay. It's a date. <laughs>